Here is a 1967 Westinghouse Solid State AM FM clock radio. This is just like the one Miles Gifford has. I'm going to go through the process of replacing the old uh, capacitors in there, the old electrolytic capacitors. Here's a look at the chassis. It's a hot chassis set. It uses a resistor to drop voltage slightly going to the uh, circuit from the AC power line. Here's the bad capacitor. This is one of those cardboard electrolytics. Same type that's used in tube radios. Always seems to go bad. Here's a date of November, November probably November 8th or so, 1967. And we'll first start just by cleaning it up. Let's get the vacuum cleaner and the brush and clean it. Now that it's been cleaned off, I'm going to remove the strainer leaf down here. And it's kind of unusual the way the power cord is on this. It comes up through the bottom. I think this power cord was damaged here. It's got some black tape on it. So what I'm going to do is just get the vice grips. I'm going to put the vice grips on here and just compress this to remove the strain relief. Now the strain relief has been loosened. I went ahead and just cut this cord because the uh, insulation was damaged here and I'm going to have to re-solder it. But if your cord is in good shape, you can just uh, take the strainer leaf up off of here and just leave the cord intact. You wouldn't need to cut it to remove it. Next thing we're going to do is to remove the knobs. We need to take the chassis out of the cabinet. So we'll just remove the knobs here. And we should be able to pull it out. There aren't any bolts, it doesn't look like, to hold the chassis on. So should be able to just pull back. We need to might need to lift up or something. Gotta be careful for these switches here. We'll try and get these in the mid position. These little plastic actuators on these slide switches. So now I'll try and pull out the chassis so we can work on it. Here's what you gotta do to remove the chassis. You'll see here that the circuit board was down behind that notch in the usual position. You gotta lift up on the circuit board and then pull back, and you got to do it on both ends. So now that I've got it, got it lifted up, I can go ahead and pull. Make sure this end is all the way. Make sure it's up all the way. I may need to put the camera down in order to get it out. You only need to pull the chassis back far enough till it stops. You probably could get it out some more, but I just pulled it out until the circuit board is kind of at this position. Next thing we're going to do is to replace the old capacitor. Here's the old cap, and one thing we need to make sure of is to note which terminal goes to what. you got two positive terminals and one negative, and what we're going to do is replace the uh, old capacitor with two new ones. So we've got here the triangle mark, so Go ahead and just mark a little triangle. Let's see here, see if this will work. Okay. We know that's going to be the triangle terminal right there, so we can orient the new capacitor. I've got here desoldering wick, rosin core solder, and the soldering iron. I've got it all heated up. So what I'm going to do is just to heat up the terminal there on the circuit board and use the desoldering braid on it to wick away the old solder. I don't have the tripod here so I'm not going to be able to show the procedure in process but I'll show you the results. Here we're just holding, might be able to show you this, just heat the uh, braid up at the terminal here until it wicks away the solder. Well it kind of fell away but you get the idea of what you need to do this one's been done already here, so we'll do the other three, or the other two now. Now you'll notice that all the old solder has been wicked away, and we're careful not to leave the soldering iron on, on the terminal any longer than necessary to avoid damaging the circuit board, because if you leave it on there for too long, you can actually burn the, the circuit board or burn the copper trace right off the board. Now we're ready to remove the old capacitor, and it just comes out real neatly and easily. And let's see what our ratings are here. Okay, well you got a hundred and hundred and fifty. 
we'll just use two 100s. And especially because this is a solid state rectifier, if you increase the capacitance, it's not going to hurt anything at all. If you've got a tube rectifier, you don't want to go too much higher than the original because it may provide too much of a surge at turn on and be hard on the tube. But two 100s will substitute for this with no trouble at all. And I made a note here that the, here's a triangle terminal. So here's a triangle, and here's the legend. Triangle is the hot lead for the 50, or the positive lead for the 50. The square is the positive for the 100. And I've got a common negative here at the neg terminal. So if we put this back in in the right orientation, looks like a negative will be along here. And this is, you can see this usually on ground terminals, it kind of covers a larger area because you've got a lot of things that are connecting to ground. So here's where your first positive will connect, and here's where your other positive will connect. Here are the two new capacitors. 100 microfarads at 160 volts. I always need to make sure that the voltage rating is at least as high as that on the old cap. Let's double check the old cap here. Okay, 100 working volts and 75, so we're good to go with these. And I think these are only like 49 cents or 79 cents or something. They're not real expensive at all. So what I'm going to do is now install them. Got to put both the negative leads into the terminal where the old negative was. One positive to each old positive terminal. Here's our uh, preparation for soldering here. Got the caps in. Got both the negative leads going to here, to the negative terminal. And you can just kind of fold those over to hold them in place while you solder them. You can nip off the excess once you make your solder joint. And there's your other positive. So now it's time to solder in the new capacitors. Make sure polarity is correct. It can really even cause the capacitor to explode if you get it backwards. So you always want to make sure polarity is exactly the same as the original. And here are the finished solder joints. See, they look good and shiny. Got a good connection there. Good connections all the way around. And what you want to do is just to touch the soldering iron to the joint of the component lead and the circuit board. Let it heat up just for a second or two and then apply the solder. Want to make sure that it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look dull or brittle or anything then you might have a bad solder joint. And you just, just don't want to heat it up for too long, no more than it takes to make your joint so you don't burn the circuit board. Here's the top view of the new caps. They're in very neatly. You want to make sure that these tops of these caps don't touch anything because they connect to the negative terminals. Don't want to cause any shorts. One other thing to notice, and I may, might have, I should have said this before, is that these wires are bound up back here by this metal clip. I want to free these before you even try and pull the chassis out so you've got enough room, uh, enough slack in the wire so you don't pull anything out. Now it's time to hook the power cord back up and we're ready for a test. Now the power cord has been re-soldered. It's very important to make sure that you don't cause any short circuits to adjacent terminals and that all of the strands of the copper wire have gotten uh, covered with solder. You don't want any of those strands getting loose and causing a short. But Miles, on your radio, since you're probably not going to have to replace the power cord like this, you shouldn't shouldn't even have to mess with it. Just on this one, it was messed up where it went in the strain relief. So what I'm going to do now is to put the strain relief back on. I can just push the chassis back in and give it a test. Now everything has been reassembled. When you push the chassis back, you want to make sure that you don't nick the power cord with any of the sharp terminals under there. And just make sure you dress the leads of the power cord so they're in a, in a good position and not, not pinched on anything. We've got the knobs put back on, sprayed the volume control with control cleaner, and ready for the demonstration. I still think I should put a new plug on here. There's, I think there was some damage to the wiring there, but I'll have to do that later. You can give is